Hello, everyone. This is Dylan Kurosaki here, and welcome back to the show where I react to videos. Now, if you guys don't know what the Dylan Kurosaki show is, it's I basically react to videos you send me. Like, I I know that you guys are going to be on my case saying, Dylan, we haven't sent you anything. Well, here's why. I guess you're not aware of the Dylan Kurosaki show. There is a hashtag for it as well. So what you need to do is hashtag the Dylan Kurosaki show and leave a video link to the most scariest video you can find for me to react to. Anyways, let us begin. Today we're going to be reacting to Horror Shorts Party. Now I know you're all, all kind of familiar of them already. This one is um, Dark Web Horror Story. Deep Web Series 2. Oh, that brings me right in. Oh, and Taylor Snickerson, I heard great stuff about him. This story oh, happened when my girlfriend Lindsay resided in Tokyo, Japan for a That's the Greg! She taught English to foreigners for a fairly decent pay. That's the Greg! I wasn't too cultivated by the idea, as the thought of Lindsay being in a foreign country by herself <laughs> really I love that Easter egg to her with party. I can't wait to fly over. Yeah, me too, babe. Hey, can you please make sure your doors are locked? I already locked it, silly. Stop being so paranoid. I know I'm being paranoid. I just... I just want you to be safe, okay? Don't worry, I am. Being away from Lindsay definitely took a toll on my health, as I would constantly get anxious from worrying about her safety. Knowing that I didn't really? have the capability of protecting her from any unlawful perpetrators always gave me extreme anxiety. Which is why my doctor prescribed an inhaler He's just been a good every time Lindsay. I felt the symptoms get out of hand. I didn't do too well with long distance relationships, but I really wanted to support Lindsay in her career endeavors. I'd fly well, that's a good over thing. there on occasion, good on usually you. around the holidays when work wasn't so strenuous for the both of us. I remember spending the majority of my time watching the rather odd Japanese game shows while Lindsay and her roommate Saki would do after hours work from home. Staying in Japan was quite the culture shock. I wasn't used to the Eastern lifestyle, but oh, the longer oh. I stayed there, the more accustomed I became. Or I should say, the more comfortable I felt. I with love stayed. Japan. Being halfway across the world made me adjust my sleeping schedule as That's I made really my cool. duty to video chat Lindsay every day at exactly 3 a.m. in the morning. 3 a.m. over and here was equivalent to 5 That's p.m. Really over there, late. according to the time zone difference. <laughs> I'd make it a routine to oh, catch Lindsay okay. after her work shift was done, even if that cost me a few hours of sleep. You guys doing anything for Halloween? Yep, Saki you and I are really probably should. going to uh, I'm going to sleep. Nice. I wish I could for do that. Hey, we'll talk later. Saki's calling me. Seeing that Lindsay had a roommate to acquaint herself with gave me a little peace of mind. A lot of my friends were well aware of how concerned I was Is about Is he okay, though? He doesn't so look so well. He should get some sleep. Encouraging words to help cheer <laughs> me up. That's but him, Terrence. That changed one day I like that used to it. When I got a message from one of my close colleagues from school. I open the message and read, Hey Craig, I know you're concerned about Lindsay, so I thought you might want to check this link out. It was a link to a forum titled, Is Teaching Abroad in Japan Safe? I hesitantly clicked the link, only to see the forum containing a large thread of positive comments saying stuff like, Teaching there was a great experience. Highly recommended. Or, uh, once you go to Japan, you'll never need I always thought it was safe. Stuff like that. But, uh, I then came across a user a that posted a comment saying, For those who are considering being a tutor in Japan, you might want to watch this first before you fully commit. With a link right next to it. I felt extremely skeptical clicking the link, but 
my curiosity was too overbearing to withstand my compulsion. So I clicked. Are you feeling okay? I then saw a little ah! of a woman with her hands bound to the ceiling while being completely wrapped in duct tape. The woman was also wearing a plain white mask over her face. Bam! Femalam! I couldn't tell if this was a joke or some sort of sick snuff film until I saw a man approaching the woman holding a large machete. I could hear oh, his feelings screaming in agony as he began to shout, What is your name? Please, sir, please just let me go. Please just let me go. What is your name? My name is Kathy. Please don't hurt Wrong me. answer! Your name is Dog. Calm and down. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh my god. Oh That's my god. I exited my web browser and instinctively video call Lindsay. Oh my lord. It was about a quarter past three, the time I usually video called her. Oh, why now? Come on, answer the video call, damn it. I assumed she was still at work or possibly. See, look, he's been a good boyfriend. So I waited patiently for a return call at her convenience. I decided to stroll around Instagram for another hour or so till it was time to call it a night. I, I hope she's a posted okay. a few pictures from the Halloween night out she had a couple days ago. It looked like a huge costume festival of some sort on the streets of Japan. That's when I spotted Kibuya. a shocking revelation in each of the photos presented. I saw a man wearing the same god mask as in the snuff film I'd seen earlier, nonchalantly masquerading in the background of the photos. He was in every photo looking towards the direction of where the picture was being taken. Or should I say, the oh, direction no. of where my girlfriend I... and her roommate were. Oh my god. That's when I get a video call from Lindsay. I unnervingly accept it and see what seemed to be Lindsay and her roommate Saki wearing white masks with the words Dog 1 and Dog 2 written on them. Hey, why the hell are you guys wearing that? I want to play a game. Guys, who the hell is what that? What is it, Saw? They both stood there silent is looking it at the Seriously? Almost like my words didn't have any significant purpose to them. I then heard them Gosh. in the background saying, Transfer $20,000 to Dog 2's PayPal account right now, or else they both die. What the hell is going on? Please, leave them alone or I'll call the cops! So be it. Dog 2, take out Dog 1, now! Please don't make me do this! Do it! Dog 2, take out Please Dog 1 now or else you're both getting taken out! Please don't make me do this! Do it, Dog 2! Take out dog one right now. Oh, or else I'm Lord have mercy on us all. No, please. Oh. That's when Lindsay raises a large kitchen blade in the air and stabs Saki in the neck. I can oh! see her her own blood while struggling to gasp for what seemed to be her last remaining breath. Oh. Dude, please stop this. I'm begging you. I'll do anything you want. Just, just please don't hurt my girlfriend. That's when the voice in the background revealed himself. Only to unveil the same man wearing the god mask that I'd seen. Yo, in this is really good. Instagram photos earlier. Dude, I can see why people love Holy Coach Party. A huge machete in the air, saying, "Transfer the money, or else this dog gets put down." Yo, too. you, Holy Coach Party, you get a follow from me. Right now. That's when I grabbed my phone and immediately began to transfer twenty thousand dollars to Lindsay's PayPal account. Here, here, look! I transferred twenty thousand dollars. Now, now, please, can you let her go? I did everything you wanted. The man then approached the camera up close and began saying, I'm just a guy trying to survive in this cold, cold... For the year, the Zumi Otoko! I just do what You're I an idiot. to do to put food on my family's table, you know? Just no, we just God has idiots. nothing to do with this. What the hell? I began to request for another video chat, but there was no answer. Now I can see why he can't sleep. That's when I get two messages from Lindsay's Oh my Lindsay's god, poor guy. I click the chat box and see an image of Lindsay's severed head on top of the computer desk. The other image was a meme face with the caption, Gotcha. Holy poopy pants!
This is True Christmas Horror Christmas. Story. I hate it with the most malice intentions ever. As a matter of fact, the thought of Christmas makes my skin crawl. I wasn't like this before. I used to cherish the holiday tradition, but all of that's changed now. It all started a couple years back when I was 26 years old. It was the holidays, so Christmas was around the corner while festivities were in oh, full Hey, oh, I'm on my way to pick you up. Merry Christmas. I'm excited to go Christmas shopping. Yeah, me too. Me and my girlfriend Emma had dated since high school, so the bond that we shared was something most couples couldn't fathom to say the least. I decided to propose to Emma on Christmas. Figured That's I couldn't really go good. wrong on such a monumental That's occasion. Really you. I remember it being a snowy evening when me and Emma went to the mall to do some Holy Christmas Christmas party shopping. Mall. I like that Easter egg. The mall egg. was bombarded with more shoppers than usual as there was a holiday sale going on in almost every store. I remember being in need of a festive outfit for my parents' upcoming Christmas party as my wardrobe lacked the attire. I decided to check out the clothing store Forever 21 as I could see they had a I heard about that shop actually from first glance. I like that shop. I picked out an array of various Christmas sweaters <laughs> Don't and question me. while my girlfriend waited outside for me. Oh yeah, fits way better than my dad's lame hand-me-downs. Hey babe, how does this look? Oh, uh, where did she go? Emma where did his girlfriend go? I figured she must have gone back it's never got store and your girlfriend clothes. disappears. As I left the change room, no, I change. noticed from the corner of my eye that Emma was outside the store waiting in a huge line for something. I end up Santa purchasing Claus. one of the sweaters it's and began to it's a mall. Emma. Hey babe, why'd you leave me hanging in the fitting room? I wanted to line up and take a picture with him. Emma, this line is huge. I'll just dress up as Santa later and you can take a picture of me. He's not <clears> Santa though. I don't lie. I looked towards the direction of where the lineup began and realized that there were two separate lineups. One lineup was for a professionally taken photo with the mall staff. Yeah. The other lineup was for a picture with That's the, the, the Grinch. That's the Grinch. We were but he's also a take on the Krampus. The as Emma was a pretty big fan as of the well. character. I personally found the whole ordeal bizarre considering he didn't have any professional setup like how the mall Santa had. Yeah, you know, look at no chair, no professional photographer, no elf services, just him and the bench he sat on. I assumed he was one of those street performers that just dressed up for donations, except there was well, no, no I don't trust those or people. anything that, that would allow to, to me. donate in. Emma, um, this guy looks kind of sus. In the Can past. Can leave? I just stayed away from that. Relax, Henry. It'll only take a couple of minutes. I decided to bite my tongue and proceed with Emma's request as there was nothing I could have said that could convince her otherwise. As we got closer to the front of the lineup, I could visibly see the Grinch's eyes light up with exhilaration. Almost like oh, a Lord. Oh, Lord. I decided to be ballsy Grinchy, and lock Grinchy. eyes with him, no, just no, to no. express more of my alpha male side towards this weirdo. As the line gradually progressed, I realized that- That's bad, don't do that, don't do that. Me. He was looking at my Please girlfriend. Please don't give us that. It off. was blatantly obvious he had an interest in my girlfriend due to the lack of attention he was giving others taking photos with him. What the hell is this guy's problem? Why is he checking out my girlfriend? We eventually <laughs> I reached know the, why. Of the line and approached the coach <laughs> to take a three-way selfie with my cell phone. Hey, buddy, the girl gets a picture first. Dude, that's my girlfriend. I said, yeah. get behind the girl, kid. Uh, stupid green prick. Another beautiful ho. Exactly. What did you just call me? Uh, oh! Ho ho. Merry Christmas. What's your name, little girl? Um, my name is. Emma. He's creepy. Oh, what a beautiful name to match such a beautiful face. Why don't you come here and sit on Daddy's lap? Dude, what the hell is your problem? Oh! She wants to me, not you. He's my boy. Oh! Don't talk to him like that. Sit on my lap and be a good girl, Emma. Or else Santa won't give you any presents this year. You did some that! That's when we decided to head home. Oh, they should have got to the other side. I remember dropping off my girlfriend oh my at Lord. place and home to assist my parents in prepping for the Christmas party the following night. My parents were really old school and put a lot of effort into decorating their household. Well, I do that, and like I'm this. 30. Later that night, 
I remember making myself a glass Damn, of hot says whiskey. With a little bit of whiskey. <laughs> I like his I voice sat by the fireplace and enjoyed the fire crackling ambience while casually sipping on my drink. Figured I couldn't go wrong with that on a warm Christmas Eve. And now he's asleep because of the drink. It's whiskey, of course you would. I remember hearing my cell phone ringing throughout the night. I recall being so intoxicated I couldn't see nor hear anything distinctively. Everything was blurry. It felt virtually whiskey. impossible to move any fiber of my body, almost like I was stuck in a subconscious state of sleep paralysis. I began to close my eyes and doze off again. A couple hours later, I recall a voice whispering my name. Hey, Henry. Oh! Henry, wake, wake up. up. Hello, wake, wake up, up, little drunk, it's me, me, Santa. I could vaguely see the outline of a man that looked like a Santa figure standing in front of me. Oh! Mind, I was still in a groggy and incoherent state of mind, so making out the gentleman's minuscule facial features was almost an impossible to endeavor to comprehend. Hey, Henry, I brought you a Christmas, Christmas present. Dad, is that you? Henry, listen. I want, I want you to open up this Christmas, Christmas gift first when you wake up. Do you understand me? Yeah, Dad, sir. I'm going to leave it right here in the middle of the Christmas tree, okay? Okay. Anyways, Merry Christmas, Henry. Merry Christmas, Dad. Shh. Time to go to sleep again, Henry. You're creepy, creepy. A couple hours later. I get awoken by the light from the living room window illuminating on my face. I realized I had blacked out due to the spike concoction I had whipped up the previous night. I check my cell phone and realize that I had about 10 missed calls and over 100 missed texts from Emma. I open the text messages, only to see the text reading. That's not hey, good. Is that That's you? Really not Are good. Are you inside my place? This isn't funny, Henry. We should have gone so over to our house. What I found more disturbing was the last batch of messages that night. which read, I knew you were going to propose all along. Merry Christmas, Henry. It oh! Over and over again. Oh no! I began calling Emma's cell phone and only got her voicemail. That's when I closed my eyes and began recollecting the imagery of what transpired last night. Oh my god. I could Don't vaguely recall someone dressed as Santa I hope not. present underneath the Christmas tree. That's when I notice a box that looked out of place from the rest of the presents. I took the box and opened it, only to discover a severed hand. The hand had a message on it which read, Oh! Okay, we're doing one more shot. True Chucky Sleeves Horror Story. I've been holding on to this for a couple of years now and feel like I need to get it off my chest. I had a few years to digest this and now I'm ready to share my story with the world. I wish to remain anonymous. I tell him I'm just going after this though. My name will be Danny. <laughs> The details of the story. Right now, I I really really like uh foggy. Your thoughts. Oh, it's just so funny. Memories that occurred a couple of years ago. It all started when me and my parents resided together in an old townhouse, which was. That was like the familiar to the. Uh, for having a high crime rate. To Toronto. I never liked living there, and neither did my parents. But it was the only thing that we could afford at the time. My parents. Well, were it probably isn't. I'm not sure considering they had both been through a lot in their younger years. My dad has had a few run-ins with the law, while my mom lost both her parents at a very young age, so seeing them edgy at times didn't faze me at all. 
Well, I'm doing my best, all right? Can you do something else? What you're doing isn't working. I'd like to see you do better. Well, do better, Danny. <laughs> shut the hell up already. I'm tired of hearing you nag all day. You shut up, you bum. <clears throat> Almost every night, I could hear the constant back and forth bickering wow. that occurred for hours on end between not, my parents. <laughs> it's not the like hearing the parents argue like that. They would always like fight over what I assumed to be financial related issues, which had only gotten worse <sighs> over the years. My parents both didn't really make much money on their respective I'm jobs. I'm just thinking about head so in this class at the lack occurrence. of parenting. I was always scared that things would turn violent, especially with the way these two went at it. I remember one night, I was in my bed trying to induce myself to sleep by watching a couple of YouTube videos on my <laughs> cell phone. Cool. I could hear cool. the usual shouting match coming from the kitchen downstairs. The typical parent fight. It honestly sounded like they were at the point where they were going to be in a physical altercation. Oh boy! I pressed my ear against my bedroom door and could hear the distant bickering becoming Game. hostile. Game, you can use drop, but I can uh, make this time is worth it. it. This time is worth it. Real job? I'm taking Danny and we're moving out. What in the hell are you talking about? He doesn't even like you. Shut up! Shut up! Shut the hell up! Wow. I remember wow. the sounds of my mom opening up the kitchen drawers, which led me to assume she was searching for something sharp and potentially do the unthinkable. That's when I decided to head downstairs and mediate the feud to hopefully put it to rest. And please! As I approached the kitchen, I could see my mom holding a huge knife in an overhand grip. The kind of grip that someone uses in preparation of stabbing someone. I could also see oh my dad Lord. holding one of the dining room chairs, in which I, I like that this is a whole shorts party though. What are you doing here, Danny? Didn't I tell you never to leave your room unless you have to use the washroom? I'm sorry, Mom, but I heard you and Go to your room, you little turd! Don't call him that! Don't tell me exactly. Mom, please don't kill Dad. I said go to your room. Don't we shout at your Leave own Danny son alone and put the knife away, Helen. <laughs> That's when my mom began piercing the family portrait of us. Except she was only piercing the portion with my dad's face. <laughs> mom, stop! Please stop it. It's been a couple weeks after the whole saga had occurred. Wow. My parents wow. ended up getting a divorce, which unfortunately left me to reside with my mother. The court unfortunately ruled that my mom would be in favor of getting custody of me due to my dad's criminal history with the law. I honestly wow. was running away due to how much I what dreaded the her, especially with how toxic and controlling her behavior was. To be honest, if dad was most the better of my person time than dad. In my bedroom. Sulking on why I couldn't live a normal life like the rest of the younger individuals in my neighborhood. Why in the hell do I have to live with her? Why couldn't I just live with dad? He was yeah. always the better parent. Exactly what I said! I, stand her. I wish she were dead. What made this even worse was oh, wow. the curfew during my school oh, wow. Days. I didn't even have time to join any after-school clubs or sports oh, teams that sucks. due to the simple fact that I was too worried about not making it home on time. That really sucks. I remember my mom locked me out of the house for several he's, hours. And he's crying. I was five minutes past my curfew. And he's crying. The one thing that I found guy. even more aggravating was how my mom permanently banned me from going to the local Chuck E. Cheese. Are you serious? Located down the street from my residence. Hold up. Are you serious? Banning someone from their favorite place is bad. Especially if it's a Chuck E. Cheese. Like, seriously. He can be with his dad. Oh my lord. For those that aren't familiar with Chuck E. Cheese, it's a restaurant that has arcade games. And I and love going there when I was a kid. Such as myself. Okay, wow, well, I do I enjoyed going there. As it would bring back fond memories of when me and my dad used to go. I usually went to Chuck E. Cheese every time it was my birthday. 
just as a tradition my dad established when we all used to live together. And I lived there for one of my birthdays, but too. All of that is gone now. My mom took my entire childhood away from me, which I find equivalent to ripping my heart out of my chest. Oh, guy! I feel bad she for him. selfishly didn't want me going because she didn't want me to be reminded of my dad's existence. The oh rules my and restrictions I had to abide by really made it difficult to make any friends. I feel so bad for him. Which put me in a dark state of mind for the latter part of my life. I feel so bad for him. There was one night where I decided to approach my mom and convince her to bring me to Chuck E. Cheese for my upcoming birthday. I honestly cared more about Chuck E. Cheese than my actual birthday itself, which is why I ended up using it as an excuse to go there. Hey, Mom, can we please go to Chuck E. Cheese for my- No, Danny, I already told you this. But it's for my birthday. No, 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 no. I anticipated the rebuttal my mom was going to throw at me, but- that didn't stop me from being persistent with my request. Good, thank you. After a few goodness. tears and relentless pleading, my mom eventually caved in and agreed to Hold up! my birthday. Hold up! Guys, if you're not, not see this, every Sunday, Kobe X Kenshin Spooky Scary Sundays is my odd Sunday. I, I like how they did that. I really like that. Because I tune in every Sunday for Spooky Scary Sundays. I'm always on time. Every time Corey can can drop Spooky Scary Sundays on Sunday, I'm already there with my snacks and my drinks. Just to watch Spooky Scary Sundays. I'm always on time. The exhilaration of going to Chuck E. Cheese after all these months was honestly something I would compare to an inmate getting released from jail. I felt so excited to the point where I didn't even care about anything else. Oh my dear lord! He's like the Papa Man! Oh lord! They eventually arrived, and it was time for me to finally visit Chuck E. Cheese once again. It was about the evening time, so the venue was usually packed to full capacity. Oh, look at his eyes, too. What was in front of me, as I genuinely felt I was a kid in a candy shop. I used to go in those slides. I love those slides. I immediately started playing the arcade games while my mom wandered off to grab some food. I remember being so hungry, but at the same time so infatuated with Oh god, I'm about to see that face again. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help but indulge in countless games as I knew this could be my very last time at Chuck E. Cheese. That's when I felt a strange tap on my shoulder. That actually happened to me! The direction of where I felt the tap, Once. only to see a large Chuck E. Cheese rat mascot hovering over me. I was a little alarmed that the mascot would approach me. Yeah, like, what happened to me? That happened to me too, as a kid. Uh... Hey, Chucky. The mascot didn't say anything. But it was the he bear that did it, though. staring at me with his big, elongated eyes. I noticed he had red stains on his costume, which I assumed to be pizza stains. But then I noticed the stains had transferred onto the shoulder area of my shirt oh. from the tap he did earlier. I now knew that these were definitely not pizza stains. They had to be blood stains of some. Oh my god! Chucky? Is she gone? Yeah. Oh! Here. Take my hand, Danny. Oh! I miss you too, son. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. First of all, all praise goes to Horror Shorts Party.
I guess you my people love you. You make amazing. And I... I actually really mean this. I... Love you, Holy Coats Party. You make great stuff. Continue up the great work. I love it. And this is... And I'm being honest, too. I really like these animations. All praise goes to Holy Coats Party. I love you guys. Like I keep saying, because I really, really like these shorts. Anyways, guys. Before I go, I just want to say one more thing. <clears throat> if you guys want to send me scary videos, hashtag the Dylan Kurosaki Show and send me links to the scariest videos you can find. Because I really enjoy doing this. So I'm going to repeat this one more time. Hashtag the Dylan Kurosaki Show and link me to the scariest videos you can find. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see some more videos like this, ask for a blast that like button. And keep relaxing, relaxing, and don't stop believing. And most of all, I love all of you. <laughs>